Hi, my name is Tarmila, licensed realtor with EXP Realty Brokerage here in Toronto. This video, I got to sit with Tori Akini. She is also a new realtor, and I actually used to watch her YouTube content when I was studying for the real estate program. She's a great study resource and someone who I used to admire and follow. Check it out. Hi, Tori. It's so nice to have you. Thank you for taking time to chat with me. And I'm so happy that I didn't realize I, I'm a fan of your YouTube content. Same with my partner. Um, and we were inspired by the things that you were putting out. And I'm so glad that I have a chance to sit with you. And I didn't realize we were taking the program around the same time and now literally started like kind of launched our business around the same time so this is kind of exciting um, and I can't wait for people to have a look at this and be inspired and maybe connect with us in terms of um, resources but also be inspired to be be inspired to you know take up real estate and pursue a career in real estate as well absolutely like you said, it's funny how we kind of had similar journeys. We're going through the course at the same time. We got licensed around the same time. We ended up joining the same company. Absolutely. <laughs> and, then we, 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 and then we met after all of that. And like our personalities just already sync and everything. So it's, it's definitely a pleasure to be chatting with you again. Awesome. Yeah. Um, can you tell everybody why real estate? How did you uh, get into real estate? And when did you start your program? So I started my program January 4th of this year. So I was in a major just transitional period of time. Um, I had, I was working in the insurance claims industry over the last 10 years. I had a car accident that left me with a concussion. So just the time of things that were happening. I was transitioning to different careers and real estate is always something that I've just had a passion for and talking to people, teaching, mentoring, educating people has always been a passion. So it just really seemed like a natural fit for me. So I took that leap of faith. I started January the 4th. Things are going good. Um, I had actually planned on working at a brokerage part-time while I was getting my courses to get that extra experience. And then it was three days later that the whole pandemic happened yeah. and life kind of just started changing again. But it all was for the better good because I had more time to really nail down the courses and finish as fast as I could and uh, ended up getting licensed that same year. Wow. Wow. I love how there were so many challenges, literally. I'm, I'm sorry that you had to go through that accident. And clearly you're like an example of resiliency, right? And to get through, and for those that are taking this program right now and are gonna be watching this, it's hard. It's really challenging. And if you are someone who've never taken or been in real estate or purchased a place before, I, I honestly, it's, it's a different language, right? Absolutely. Um, and that's why, sorry. The, go ahead. The first course just yeah. getting the first course mainly you're just getting used to all the different terminologies but it's kind of funny because I was talking I was talking to a new client earlier today and I was saying some of the language and they're like oh wait what's the completion date and I'm like oh my gosh <laughs> it's just funny now it, it becomes second nature to you but yeah. then you know there was that time where you're like whoa what is this so it's definitely oh, a yeah. whole Rising. Oh yeah. Uh, how, how many times have you Googled something while you're learning? Like, oh, God. that was every day. <laughs> because I think the way they were teaching, I didn't understand, right? Like you're new to this industry, right? And they were speaking to you as if you were already kind of, you understand what you were getting into. And I'm like, Ooh, not really. And I, and I've told you before, Josh and I have an interest in real estate and we were investing. So we were on the buyer's end a lot of the time and we never, yeah. you know, either listed a property and we were not we worked with agents who were, they were the expert in dealing with us. So we were never thinking about it from an agent perspective. And now that we're in it and the terminologies literally went over our head, right? Absolutely. Um, and the funny thing is with the course being online, there's actually a lot of visuals to the slides, but I feel like there wasn't so many, so much visuals of what you were learning. So there's a lot of pictures of people in the background, realtors and things like that, which is funny. But like when, especially course two, when they're going over the different construction components, the wiring and things like that, like I had to be going on Google and YouTube to kind of get better visuals to see what does that look like 
like in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even especially with like uh, like structural questions, like um uh what's it called, like supplies and walls and different. When they're getting into the real like inspection related things, they would show one picture that was a type of wall, and you're like, ah, uh, is that the only <laughs> thing that it exists in every house that's a brick? I know, right? And it's not the case, for example, right? But anyways, but it's funny. I wanted to mention one thing though, because last time when I was chatting with you and I was telling my husband how much. Tori's always ahead of the game with, you know, putting out YouTube content and creating things, being a resource for a lot of students like myself and my partner is the, the, the way that you're so prepared is the way you're prepared with your Christmas tree on the background. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Oh, I can, gosh. You are, it's, it's not something that you embody. Like, this is who you are. And I like it. I, I I am. I like that we have that in similar because I my list have list. So this is good. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I'm definitely. I'm my own pro. problem. And I even just up. going back to the course, like I am usually, I take notes for everything. Yes. Like I have notes on my phone, notes on my paper, notes on my desk, everything. If we're having a conversation, I'm probably taking notes. Yes. But the one thing is during this course, I had to stop taking notes because yeah. there's just so much content yeah. that you need to learn, and it ends up adding a lot more time to your completion date and your studying so you kind of have to get creative and things like that but yes and all in all i i do like to be proactive <laughs> as yeah. see, our christmas tree is up already <laughs> it's not quite december yet but yeah we're close enough yeah no that's great i wanted to to me when i was in this program i needed resources and uh the first thing i did was search for them and obviously youtube being you know that number one search engine now i came upon your content which was super helpful for me and the facebook groups and a lot of people i i'm not gonna lie to you i don't think i would have gotten through the program and be as prepared went to look for a brokerage that was literally went over our head and they never thought that to us. And by the time you get to course five and learn about all the application process, you're kind of, you feel like you've missed a step, right? You missed a couple of st steps. <laughs> yeah. The criminal record check takes a while, what type to get, when to get it, all of that stuff. I'm really glad that we have resources like those Facebook groups. And there's a, a couple out there and there's some that are a bit better than others with people being a bit more engaged and be, uh, people willing to help. And, and I'm really glad that, you know, people are able to reach out and have those resources. Uh, and especially with the pandemic happening. And also because it is an online course to begin with, there yeah. isn't someone we can just, you know, go to in person and kind of ask all the questions, right? Yeah, and I'm finding that a lot. I get a lot of people reaching out to me. And it's great because a lot of people are coming into the real estate industry looking to get their license that don't necessarily know a lot of realtors. So I have a lot of people saying they want to start the program, they want to get their license, but they have like no one there to help them or no resources or things like that. And that's definitely, I would say, an area, area of opportunity for Humber <laughs> to have more of that kind of real world coaching. Um, and that's the main reason why I wanted to start my YouTube channel was to help the people get through the program. Because as I was going through it, I saw like, what do I do next? And then I would do my research and I'd find stuff and I'm like, I spent a lot of time researching this. I don't know if everybody else is going to. So let me kind of just put it in a video, put it out there, and hopefully that'll make it easier for other people. Absolutely. And the fact that you were asking those questions, guarantee you other people were asking them, right? And right. it's, this is, we talked about this. This is that one industry where, like a lot of others too, but this one in particular, I feel like they're, even the instructors and sims would call it, you know, the real world. And then what they would teach you versus, by the time you get that, you know, get into it, it's a different ball game, right? And they don't prepare you quite so for it. So I wanted to ask you, so why did you join EXP Realty uh, Brokerage? And I know that you're part of a team and what, how did you make that decision into wanting to join a team? So um, as you can probably see from my YouTube videos, I'm a very, I can be a very independent person, but I'm also a great team player. And coming into real estate, I know real estate, your real estate business is as you put, you get as much out of it as you put into it. So I'm a very pretty organized person, resourceful. So I was planning to be like a solo agent pretty much the whole year. <laughs> so I was looking for a brokerage. My number one thing was training and mentorship. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to find a brokerage that had those qualities that also had good technology. Cause I like to have technology that just 
kind of helps you do the work for you. And also that was economical, so affordable. Mm -hmm. Starting off, I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of sales in the beginning. Things would be more stretched out. So I wanted to have a brokerage that would make it easier for that payment schedule. So I did a lot of research and I found another person on YouTube um, who did a video and she was talking about her brokerage. And at the end, she said the name was EXP, but she was from the States. And I'm like, oh man, I wish there was something like this in Canada. And at the end of their video, she said that we're actually international. We're in a bunch of countries, including Canada. And I'm like, wow, that was it. Mm -hmm. So my next step was I started searching the hashtag EXP Realty Canada on Instagram. And I pretty much message every realtor I could find with who used that hashtag and just ask them their opinion about the company. And I was hearing consistently the same thing from every realtor. And I did do my due diligence. So I interviewed five different brokerages in total. But this was the one that definitely stood out to me. So I'm like, you know what, this is the choice. And I love that they have no obligation. You can join them. If you don't like them three months later, you can leave. So I l wanted to have that freedom to say, you know what, I rather give this, this seems like a really good risk to take. So I said, I rather try this. And if it doesn't work out, I can always go to another traditional brokerage. But I said, I have to try this first. Yeah. And I, you know, uh, we both uh, put out videos about why content about why we joined EXP, you know, on top of all of this. And I, I think that part of our, I love the setup of EXP in a way that people like you, you know, I want to join a team now, but I'm an independent person. I want to create my team and you have goals for your future as a business. I love that EXP has so many uh, streams of revenue that they're going to set you up to be, to be a, a team leader eventually. And I, and I like the resources they provide. No, that's awesome. Good for you. And I, same with me, I, around course three, I started looking for brokerages again, because I saw posts on Facebook when people were like, when should I join a brokerage? And they were like, some said course two, some said course three, because it apparently is the hardest course. Um, <laughs> everything was hard. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, right. And I, anyway, so when I finished course three, I thought, you know what, let me start calling people. And I called literally brokerages around my neighborhood because I didn't know, I thought you were an employee of a brokerage and that I didn't realize you were self-employed. I didn't realize the exactly. structure and the fees and the commitment that was involved. Right. Would did you feel the same? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it was so funny because as I was doing interviews with brokerages from course two, I started as I was doing interviews that I, it was the people who were interviewing me. It was them explaining to me how the real structure of things work. And they're like, don't they teach you this in the course? And I'm like, no, I'm like, did I miss, did I miss reading something? Did I miss a chapter or something? Because yeah, there's a lot that's just not applicable yeah. yet. And yeah. you know, um, I think I remember in course when they talked about, um, you know, your timetable, you know, like what is it like to be a real estate agent and how to schedule your time, how to time block. And they kind of, in course one, they lightly went over uh, commission structure, fee structure, what is, uh, you know, an average splits would be like, but it's never, I didn't realize how important you're, you know, you pre-planning and managing and prioritizing and having a real control of your schedule was because you're kind of on your own. Yes, you can join a team, but at the end of the day, you wake up and you you get what you put into it, like you said, right? Like, I think that's the- Absolutely. I think that's a preconceived notion, just like you go into any school, right? Like, exactly. And whether you're on a team or not, honestly, you're still an independent kind of business mind frame. The team can be there to add so much support and so much resources that you really do need in the beginning. But at the end of the day, it's still up to you to actually go out and put those things in practice and to do that business, to do this prospecting and get that experience yourself. So definitely. Is there any um, study tips that you used along the way that really helped you to kind of go through the program in such short amount of time? And I know they, what did they say? They said you can get up the minimum is, I know someone said they finished it in four and a half months, but four to six months, uh, mm -hmm. if you're being, you know, without any interruptions, without real world interruptions. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I actually timed it out. You could do the course in about four and a half, four, four and a half months. Um, it'd be a very diligent schedule, studying quite a few hours a day and especially yeah. topping it up on the weekend. But it definitely is possible, depending on the type of person you are and the lifestyle you have. 
Um, for me, my biggest study tip was to stop taking notes. <laughs> so course one, I started taking notes and by the end of it, I'm like, I can't do this for the whole course. It's going to take me like a, like the full two years <laughs> to finish. Yeah. So I stopped taking notes and I started relying on pass it a lot. So mm -hmm. pass it was really like my lifesaver because in reading the course materials, the style of questions on the exam is not straightforward questions. That's right. Like the, the exam, often they will give you the definition of a term in the question and they will ask you how to apply it in one of the answers. So having passive definitely helped me. Some people said it didn't help them, but for me and a lot of people, the majority of people I heard from, it was definitely get you in that same mindset. For me, I had quite a few questions, maybe up to 10 questions that were actually on pass it that I ended up seeing on the exam. So that really helped to prepare me. So my biggest tips were stop taking notes and start using pass it more regularly. With me particularly, I didn't read the whole content and then use pass it. I was studying pass it as I was reading. Huh. So I would read like in course one, there's seven modules. So yeah. in the seven, in the first module, like I would read the first module and then I do pass it questions on just that first module. Then I would read module two, do pass it questions. So I was kind of studying along while I'm reading. And that really helped me by the end of the time I was done reading, I pretty much was already studied. So those extra week or so, I would just nail down pass it and not just the multiple choice questions. Cause that's the only thing that like most people use. And I'm like, no, you have to use the terminator mm -hmm. and the rapid recall. Cause that really tests your brain to recall that information in a different way that will really help you to understand it better. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. That's interesting, because we all learn differently. I, it's funny, uh, when I took course one, I didn't know about Pass It. Um, mm. So I did, what I did was I, we, I studied course one fully. I went through it literally like you, note by note, like <laughs> sentence, word by word. And then yeah. I studied it again, and then, then it really stuck. Like, I, I, first time mm. I went, I still had no idea what encouragement was. Like I couldn't an yep. easement like i had a very oh, hard time understanding what an easement the second time i went i'm like oh how did i not get this my goodness they they had a drawing about like the lake and then you know you can't get to the lake to this person and i'm like oh that makes sense so anyway so that helped me understand it but once i you know i'm like okay this is how you do it you study the whole thing first course and then you read it again you got it and then course two came along oh <laughs> Oh, yep. <laughs> I, I could have been three separate courses. <laughs> they could have split it up. I, it, I'm kind of glad that they didn't, but it's just so much content. I feel like they made it extra long to kind of wean out the people who are, yes. who are not going to be persistent. But so true. Wow. I know if they wanted to make money, they should have done it like course four and people would be like, peace. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Right? When it's I, too late. Yeah. When I was going through course two, first of all, I, I'm not sure how strategic it was on their end because it was a lot to take in. I'm not going to lie to you. By the time exam came around, I was like, clauses, all the different types of, you know, know. Types of roofs. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to remember all of this. So it was challenging from just the amount of content. And I think what really helped me was I got past it for course two. It helped me, but I felt like, I, I'm not sure if it was the way I, I read things, the way my, my English is, the way I read and like observe information. I felt like past it, the way that the content was prepared versus the material was very different. So when I went from content to content, I didn't feel like they were black and white. So I had a, I, I, so I went through the whole content for course two and I couldn't go back again because it was a mammoth. Like I didn't know where to click and where I left off. So I finished the whole thing. I took pass it and I just did a bunch of different things on pass it. And I literally crossed my fingers and took the course and, and I was able to recall information. So, and I also took, I, you know, what really helped me Lisa Mark's chrysalis when it was available at the time. Um, yeah. and it was so good. It was like quick, uh, she, no, she's another fellow student in the bars for those that don't know Lisa Mark um, she runs she's an admin for one of the Facebook groups and she's and she has some content on YouTube as well and she's again like you Tori a great resources for people uh, that are in real estate um, and starting off so she was one of those people that I and when her quizlets were uh, when I had them and kind of disappeared I 
Um, I did download especially course four, which a lot of the content was repetitive and it was a bit dry at times. So her audio quizlet, because her voice sounds super nice because she's a podcaster, right? Yeah, so she really is. Nice, uh, listening to her content, it was, it was actually easier to take in once I purchased that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Um, yeah. yes. I had like so many different study tips, but that was definitely one of them. To really help the information stick, you don't want to just be reading it, but you want to have the content read back to you. Mm -hmm. So there's some people that have, I never got to use it, but there's some apps, I think it's just with Androids, but it will read whatever is on the screen back to you. So either having that, um, Lisa, she has so many different resources. She actually has a video study guide for course one. Yes. That came out right after I passed course one, but it really just helps to tie in the information. And even the video guy that she has for course one, that helped me understand concepts for course number two. So I, I use some of that for course number two as well, but the audio quizlets, um, just having that information absorbed in different forms can really help, better, help you better understand what the content is too. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. For me, another aspect that really helped was, anytime you don't understand a uh, like terminology, like either Googling obviously really helped, oh, but also yeah. reaching out to someone in the group, just posting the question and so many people jumped in and- You'd be surprised. It, yeah. yeah. And they were understanding, 100%. Exactly. And even in some, like there's multiple groups, but even in some of the groups, there's ones with actual licensed realtors in there. And they will, it was funny because sometimes they would tell you like, guys, this is not going to be in the real world. So <laughs> don't stress yourself about it. Like, but it's going to be on the exam. I know. <laughs> you know, it's like, ah, I need to get through. But, and it's so hilarious when I was, I honestly, when I was in the program, there were so many questions about how am I going to survive this and get through it. There's so much, but I, once you finish and you realize you get, and how many times have you came out of a, uh, an exam and you're like, I don't know how I, how I did. And you I, yeah, yeah. I studied like crazy for, I came out and I was just like, I don't know about this one. And then obviously the marks surprise you. Uh, but I, no, I agree. And I, I like the fact that you said, maybe have the content be read back to you. And the fact that a lot of us, you know, when we, when we went to college or university and we went into a class and had someone teach us, so we took after yeah. class programs and now, we have this online system, which is literally like a robot, either reading to us or we're reading it ourselves. There's that one version of learning. And I, I agree, like tap into different ways for the information to stick to you. And the fact that there isn't a lot of information out there for this program to kind of uh, help you and guide you throughout. So I'm really glad like content like yours exists and the fact that we're even having this conversation so that people are able to kind of, um, kind of um, use this as a resource uh, when they're studying as well and, and kind of have hope you can do it, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's one thing that I try to do, especially in my more recent YouTube videos, just try to be open and transparent and let people know you're going to make mistakes. There's going to be times where you don't know the answer, but it doesn't mean that it's not the career for you or that you're not going to make it. Yes. So you just take those with a grain of salt, learn from each and every experience and you keep pushing You keep going. Absolutely. No, I agree. And I, what I really love about this industry is that you can be coming from any field. I had a, a gentleman in my group, he had an MD and he, w and he was a practicing engineer. And I was like, wow. And he wanted to do real estate on the side. And I, and I admire that. And there was another, and like um, our, um, you know, the people that we see on, on YouTube that are taking up real estate, they all had another profession and they were, um, you know, they weren't experts in it, and now they're taking up real estate. So I, I love that you can be from any walks of life and, and take this program and, and kind of kick Absolutely. off your career and, and be successful in it. And I love finding out about that. I love getting to know people and their story because it's pretty much, it's really interesting. I think pretty much like the majority of realtors were in another career for quite a bit and then transitioning over into real estate. But surprisingly enough, I've had four people message me who said they're just graduating college, I mean, high school. Yeah. They're just graduating high school and coming into real estate. And I'm like, oh my God, I wish I did that. <laughs> Me too, true. But, but cool for them, right? Like, yeah. Cool for them, my that. goodness. The yeah. fact that I've gone to, you know, you've been in the field and working in another profession it feel, and it's been in another career, it felt like, okay, 
this is another very similar, but it's another industry, right? But I can't imagine when you come out of high school and the amount of questions you'll have. Honestly, kudos for them. Honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And question, so Tori, where are you practicing now and what's kind of your areas that you're covering? So I like to think of myself as a mobile filter. Okay. <laughs> so I'm in Hamilton. So I'm part of the RAP board, Hamilton Burlington board. But I live in uh, um, like right behind Stony Creek in a oh, place yeah. called Binbrook. Yeah. which is a very up and coming area. So I love this area. But funny enough, like my first, my first few clients actually have all been from the GTA. So I, my first clients were buyers in Milton. Um, I had my first listing in Vaughn. Um, when I had that listing in Vaughn, I got some other leads from Vaughn. <laughs> so I'm kind of a bit all over, but um, even even like referrals and stuff that I get, if it's too far, then we always have a good network of people that we refer out to and stuff like that. So yeah, my hometown is Hamilton. I was born and raised here over, yeah, I won't mention the amount of years, but <laughs> yeah. nice. born nice. and raised, yeah. That's great. No, that's awesome. And I'm really glad that we're kind of connected in, a, in an international level as well. Um, I know you know so that you can kind of go really anywhere and kind of practice in a way if you were to able to get that education it's also love, to refer to people right it's exactly. so i love that about exp they're expanding in so many different countries and just the fact that they're so prominent in canada and the us like i have some people who have said like uh, some people who are licensed and living in canada they're realtors and they said when they um they're eventually going to move to the us and all they have to do is go take the real estate course for a couple of weeks and they'll still be under the same company and just go and do real estate over there. Wow. So that's amazing. We really have that, that flexibility with EXP that not a lot of other brokerages have. So that's Absolutely. one of the many reasons <laughs> as yeah. well why I joined. Yeah. No, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Tori, uh, for making time to chat with me today. And I had a great time and I learned a lot from you and I hope you can have this conversation going. Absolutely. We should make this a more regular thing. <laughs> I agree. And if anybody has questions, obviously, feel free to comment below in the video. Myself or Tori will reach out to you and be, uh, we'll help you out as much as we can. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you for taking the time away. And like I said, I look forward to seeing you many more times. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you, Tori. Take care.